Okay, in this video we look at um, hypothesis testing and uh, basically uh, we try to answer the question of how to write the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis and what type of test uh, are we using and we have three types of tests left, right or two tailed so let's read the question together it says here that according to economic research units report the inflation rate for the last year was 3.4 percent so uh, we have a b c up to f it looks like it's a lot but actually um, each one of them takes um, very few steps to solve so the whole thing will not take uh, a long time but I tried to put um, all the possible situations that you might encounter when you're trying to write the null and alternative hypotheses and decide on the type of test that you want to use. So first I will go to the next page to show you um, how we write the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is written as H sub zero, okay? And it is the one, it's the hypothesis that uh, has the equal sign in it. If you look here, it has equal or less than or equal or bigger than or equal so all the time it has an equal sign the on the other hand the alternative hypothesis is h sub a and sometimes we write it as h sub one so both of them are uh, the same uh, this is how you write the alternative hypothesis and it is the one that has no equal sign in it so you see here uh, all of these are strict the uh, inequalities here or you can put not equal to and you know uh, the purpose of writing the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is because we want to test the claim that we are having in the question and always uh, look at what's written here uh, when you want to make a final decision about your test it's always going to be either you reject the null hypothesis or you do not reject the null hypothesis. So always about the null hypothesis at the end of any test. Either you reject it or you do not reject it. So now let me go and uh, show you how to write the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for different situations. So uh, here uh, you can read that an independent researcher claims that the inflation rate did not exceed 3.1%. So this is what he's saying, that it did not exceed it. Uh, the question is how would uh, he or she write the null and alternative hypotheses H0 and HA and what type of test would it be? Is it left tailed, right tailed or two tailed? So let's see. Uh, all what you have to do is to look carefully at what's written here. This is his claim. It says he claims that inflation rate that would be the rate so the average mu. So let's uh, see what he claimed. So first you find where the claim is in the problem and he said that it did not exceed uh, 3.1. So did not exceed means that it's less than or equal to 3.1. So that is of course mu. So uh, again did not exceed. Think about it carefully. It means that it wasn't more than 3.1. So it could be 3.1 or less. And that's why uh, this is our claim in this case. So once you write the claim, now you need to uh, see is this H0 or is it HA? Uh, so go back and you will see that H0 is the one that has equal sign in the claim. So when you go back here, you see that we have less than or equal. So immediately we know that this is our null hypothesis H0. Okay, just to remind you, one time I will write it. This is the null hypothesis. Okay, and so now uh, what we do is we write them down. So you say now H0, I found it. It's mu less than or equal to 3.1. And uh, versus the alternative hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis in this case, HA, you want to write it it's always the opposite to the null hypothesis. So if you say less than or equal, see here you are saying that less than or equal, so the alternative will be strictly bigger than 3.1. So 
in this case, we have written uh, the two of them. But I want you to always do this. Once you write uh, the null and alternative hypothesis, go back to the claim. And the claim is this, which is H0. So just put an arrow saying that this is my claim. My claim is H0 in this case. So uh, now uh, we are done writing H0 and HA. We want to solve the second part of the question, which is uh, look back. It says, what type of test would this be? Left, right, or two-tailed? So uh, this one is uh, pretty easy. Uh, always look at the alternative hypothesis for the type of test. I would say here, if you are trying to find the type of test, then always look at alternative hypothesis. And you look at what you have here. Here I have bigger than. Strict, of course, always strict uh, bigger for alternative, or strict less or not equal. So because it's strictly bigger, uh, this would be a right-tailed test. Uh, so when you see more examples solved in this video, you will understand uh, when it's right, when it's left, and when it's two-tailed. But, but I will tell you, for right, it's when you have strictly bigger. This will be explained later, is why would it become right-tailed if it's uh, strictly bigger, and why would it be left-tailed if it's uh, strictly less, and so on. Uh, you will understand it later. But for now, know that always look at the alternative hypothesis to decide on the type of the test. So here, this means that it's a right-tailed test for this question. Let me go to the second one. Uh, here. It's the same question, except that I give you a different situation. I tell you that the claim, the researcher now claims that the inflation rate is at least 3.1%. So let's write the claim uh, in mathematically. So what does it mean, at least? At least means that uh, uh, the inflation rate mu is bigger than or equal to 3.1. That's when you say at least. So the least it could be is 3.1, which means when you say at least, it means that it could be 3.1 or more. And that's why this becomes your claim. And since it has an equal sign, see, there is an equal sign in it. So immediately I know that this is my null hypothesis, H0. So my claim is H0 in this case. So now we write uh, both the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, we just found it. It's mu bigger than or equal to 3.1. Okay, it doesn't hurt to circle it and remember to say that it is the claim for this uh, situation. And versus, we want now to write the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is the opposite to the null hypothesis. So it will be mu strictly less than 3.1. And immediately now, uh, we can get the type of test from the alternative hypothesis. Because it has less than, strictly less than, this will be a left-tailed test. Okay, so this is about uh, part B. Let's go to part C. And again, the claim in part C is that the inflation rate is less than 3.1%. So. Uh, let's write it here. The claim in this case is that the inflation rate, the average, is less than 3.1%. They didn't say or equal to. They said just less than. So it's a strict less than. And because it has a strict um, inequality, so it doesn't have an equal sign, this becomes our alternative hypothesis. This is HA. And so uh, now we can say, uh, because HA was found first, so I will write it first. HA is our claim, and it's mu less than 3.1. Okay, and write it like this, and say it is the claim in this situation, in this question. And also, if you want immediately, what we can uh, do is, because it has a less than in HA, immediately this will be a left-tailed test. So this is left-tailed test. And of course, the last thing to finish this part is to write the null hypothesis. In this case, the null hypothesis, the opposite to what's written there, less than, strict less than. 
So it means that the null hypothesis will be bigger than or equal to 3.1. Uh, I just want to mention something that in some questions it could be that um, uh, you cannot get more than 3.1. So also the null hypothesis could be mu equal 3.1. It, it can be in some situations. Okay, I, uh, but uh, for you, uh, it's uh, for this question. If it doesn't say anything, or you feel that uh, it could be more, also, so you write it more than or equal. And if it's um, causing you a lot of headache now, just write it as the opposite and forget what I said here. Uh, but it's um, it's sometimes you could see uh, the null hypothesis written with an equal and then the alternative written with the strict. But always the alternative has a strict. I will just go back to show you uh, the situations here. You see, H0 could be equal uh, in three cases combined with not equal and strict bigger and strict less. And this really depends on the question that you are answering. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you didn't understand what I just said here, it's okay. Uh, just uh, answer it like what's written now. Uh, let's go to the next part, D. So in this case, uh, let's read the claim. The claim is that the inflation rate is at most 3.1%. Now, um, at most 3.1%, let's see, how do we write this mathematically? The claim in this case would be um, U at most, it means it cannot be more than uh, 3.1, so it's less than or equal 3.1. Uh, and, of course, because it has an equal sign in it, immediately this is H0. And so uh, we can now write H0, uh, the null hypothesis, is mu less than or equal to 3.1. Uh, circle it, and uh, remember that it's our claim, in this case. We just found that it is the claim, uh, versus, now the alternative hypothesis in this case is the opposite to it, so it will be mu uh, strictly bigger than 3.1. And uh, again, uh, you remember that you look at the alternative hypothesis to find the type of test, and because it has a strictly bigger, uh, immediately this would be a right-tailed test. Right-tailed test. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, the next one, uh, what is the claim here? The rate is more than 3.1 percent. So uh, when you write the claim here, you'd say that it's claiming that the inflation rate or the average mu is more than, so bigger than 3.1 percent. So this is our claim. Notice it doesn't have an equal sign in it, so this means that this is HA. And now, uh, of course, you will write HA first because it is the claim. So you'd say HA is mu strictly bigger than 3.1 uh, versus the uh, null hypothesis, H0. But before that, because of bigger than, immediately you know that this will be a right-tailed test. And, of course, let's write the null hypothesis, H0 is... Uh, the opposite to what we have, so it will be mu less than or equal to 3.1. And, and in this case also it could be mu equal to 3.1 uh, if, um, if the question itself does not allow it to be less. But this question allows, uh, because it's an inflation rate, yeah, you, it could be uh, less than also 3.1, not just equal. So in this case the null hypothesis is this. And uh, it's a right tail test. Let's go to the last one now. And the last one is uh, uh, the claim is that it's not equal to 3.1%, the inflation rate. So here the claim is that um, mu is not equal to 3.1. When you have not equal, Immediately, this is the alternative hypothesis. Alternative is the one that doesn't have an equal sign in it. So if you want to go back just to check this again, you see the alternative hypothesis. Let me change the color. Yeah, the alternative hypothesis is the one that has not equal or strict uh, bigger or strict less. So it's the one that with no equal sign in it. And so we know that this is the situation for us in this case. 
So this is our HA. And so therefore you uh, write HA first because it is the claim. HA here is mu is not equal to 3.1. And so uh, highlight it. Uh, ah, remember that to say that this for me here is the claim. And I need to go back because I didn't say the claim here. The claim is HA for the part E. And did we write the claim? Yeah, here we wrote the claim for the previous one. Uh, so now my claim is HA versus, and before versus, you see here, not equal to. So the type of test is the, a two-tailed test here. Two-tailed when it's not equal. Uh, yeah, I will review all of these in just less than a minute from now. Just let's write the null hypothesis for this one. So the null hypothesis, if the alternative is not equal to, the null hypothesis would be that mu is equal to 3.1. So in this case, uh, this is a two-tailed test. Uh, the, how did we know? It's f always uh, to know the type of test is from the alternative hypothesis, H sub A. Or if you remember H sub A, I just want to tell you that this we some people call it H sub 1. In some books, it's written as uh, H sub 1. So if it's written H sub 1 or H A, it is the alternative hypothesis. But the null hypothesis, H0, is always H0. It doesn't have another notation. Null hypothesis, always H0. Okay, now I will do a very quick review of what we learned. So uh, you can pause the video, take a screenshot, and keep it with you when you're solving um, questions about uh, writing the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis and deciding on the type of test. So if you remember, in all of the previous questions, we first wrote the claim, and then we decided if the claim was H0 or HA. And then the step after that is, if it was H0, we wrote what HA is. And if it was HA, we wrote what H0 would be. So the step three is to write the other hypothesis. Uh, you look at step two, and whichever one you wrote, you, wrote, you write the other one now. And then you decide on the type of test, this is very important now, by looking always at H sub A the alternative hypothesis. Always you look at HA. And I told you that sometimes they call it H sub 1. So you look at H sub 1 or you look at H sub A. They are the same. Um, and uh, you have three choices. Either you have not equal or strictly less or strictly bigger. Not equal, it's a two-tailed test. Strictly less, left-tailed. And strictly bigger is right-tailed test. Okay? Of course, uh, we still didn't um, solve any uh, real questions. We didn't see how to reject or not reject. What do we need to compute in order to dis decide what to do? Uh, if you go back uh, quickly again, you will see here that uh, if you read this part, you'll see there are two options for the final decision of the test. Is either you reject H0 or you do not reject H0. Uh, this will be made in another video. Uh, another part of this uh, uh, string about uh, hypothesis testing. Okay, I will stop here, uh, but please watch the coming parts, the parts after, after this one, because they will teach you what to do next after you identify the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, and you decided on the type of test to be used, which uh, deciding on the type of the test is, uh, you get it from here at the end when you look at HA, so after you do that, what else do you have to do in order to make a conclusion about uh, your claim? This will be done in the next coming videos. Okay, so I will stop here.